welcome back to the channel and to Keswick. Today we're on day four, so it's the wilderness day. We're going to work away from here in Keswick over to Colbeck. So we're going to be out in the wilds most of the day. We'll come across the only Wainwright on this trip, and that is High Pike. Right, let's look at it on the map. We start today's adventure in the Lakeland town of Keswick. We head north and cross over the bypass to Latrig Wood, then skirt the edge of Latrig on our way into this remote section of the Cumbria Way. After visiting the Shepherd's Monument, we head out into the wilderness. This will be a full day in the rolling hills and is the most remote section of our five day journey. Although we're largely away from civilization, we have the chance to stop to get some refreshments at Skiddle House, which is the highest hostel in Britain. Once refreshed, we leave the hostel behind and continue our way through the Henry Valley floor, passing two unusual circular sheep pens. The valley walk continues with the river at our side and a well-constructed path at our feet. Once we turn left, the ascent begins to High Pike. This section is trickier underfoot but has some lovely waterfalls along the way. After reaching the flatter section, we pass Lingy Hut, a well-known botany in the area, and continue on to reach the highest point of the Cumbria Way, High Pike. From here, it's a steady downhill as we once again make our way into farmland. Colbeck is in sight and this marks the end of our section for today. This is a wonderful day out in the hills and I really hope you enjoy it. New rabbits at the gym here, got another three over there, one here. What we're walking in now is just past the old railway station which is just there which I got on the lat rig video. We are going to walk past lat rig but not go up it. Alison's with me today. There you go. Back on camera. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go up here and then work our way towards Lat Rig. Just walking down Briar Rig. So you've got Dodds there in the distance, then up on the Skiddor Range, and close to us here, that's Lat Rig, which is a Wainwright. We're down here when we turn off. So Skiddor sign there, four miles. Skiddor is up yonder, but much closer is Lat Rig. There it is. So I've got a video on that and Skiddor actually, and Dodd, which is over there. <laughs> so <laughs> they're in the Northern Fells section of the site. So if you want to have a look in there, uh, you'll find them. We're going to go down here and we're essentially walking the edge of Lat Rig today and then just going straight past it and into the wilderness. On this section, we're going to go over the A66 bridge in a sec, but the path behind me there is pretty stable as you can see. And it's like that most of the way up Lat Rig if you want to go that way. So it's a decent path today for the majority of it. On the top it is a little bit more boggy. I can tell you that from previous experience as we get towards Lingy Hut. So we'll look at that later on. But we're going to get quite good views out and we are walking to the edge of the National Park today. There's the uh, architectural wonder over the gem of the A66. There it is, in all its majestic glory. <laughs> well, this is us heading up in the lat rig path. And it is quite steep. Let's go up for a little bit here now. Then you get good views out over the Skiddle range. This is lat rig wood. And look, our friend the red squirrel. And Alison's claiming to have just seen one in this wood somewhere in the trees. Oh well, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> it's quite early in the morning, about half past eight now. Uh, I'm just taking my jacket off because I know it's going to be a bit of a steep up, so I'm going to get hot pretty quick. Yeah. Looking forward to the up, do you remember this? Yes, I remember it. <laughs> <laughs> Warm me up anyway. There you go, as we're coming up, a few out there. You've got Bassenthwaite Lake and then up to Dodd and then you can work your way across to Skiddor up there in its native cloud in the Wainwright box uh, the woods we're just coming out of now he does say that they're full of wild animals and courting couples so just be careful if you're in there <laughs> right so there's a, a quicker split you can go if you're going up that rig that way but we're not so we're just going to go that way around we're through the woods now and this denotes our walk onto the fells. There you go, Basson to wait like there again. <laughs> 
for this today, a lot of it is going to be this kind of thing, just walking on the edge of a fell. So we're going to have nice views going out most of the day and walking between the mountains, mainly using the valleys, then working our way up to the highest point of this entire walk. And that is High Pike, well named. Just down there looking back, you've got Cat Bells and then the Newlands Watershed going round. So we're going to skirt down here and then head our way into the hills. There's the heathery slopes of Skiddle Little Man. We're going to carry straight on here, but that is the turn point if you're going up to Lat Rig. Three quarters of a mile up there. But for us, this is our chosen path today. So heading pretty much towards Blancathra. They did put quite a bit of rain down yesterday, so the ferns at the side of my hair are quite bent over and <laughs> just flopping a bit. So we're down here, and so we'll get near to Blancathra, and then the hills we'll see today are quite roundy because it's the northern fells, so they're kind of uh, convex hills. Although we are going up to the highest point of the walk today, this is uh, a gradual up, so steady inclines pretty much a lot of the day, then a steady decline after that. There we go. So we're just crossing this road and then over to another path. A lot of people parked here. Oh, we parked here and went to Skiddaw, didn't we? Oh, yeah, we did. Uh. <laughs> I'll put a link into the Skiddaw video, but if you do see it, it's like really high winds on top. And that's what added to my uh, fear of high winds over the course of the last year. <laughs> It was like lean into the wind type stuff. It was November and there was a girl there in trainers and leggings and her boyfriend was fully kitted out in Kia. <laughs> I said to her when she got to this car park, do you want to lift back to Kazakh? And she was like, oh. and her boyfriend was like, oh no, we'll do the miles, it's all right. But she's absolutely soaking wet through. So uh, yeah, maybe ask the missus. <laughs> gates on this one today. Whoop. There we go. Well, the light's just catching that there. Ooh. New sheepies around. Purple heather. We're coming up to the Howell Monument now. It's only about 100 yards off the route so I'll just show it to you. The route is down here but we'll just go to the monument which is just there. the monument in loving memory of Edward Howell. Also, also Sir Robert Walker Howell, great shepherd of thy heavenly flock. These men have left our hill, their feet were on the living rock. Oh, guide and bless them still. For us, we're going to go behind here and head our way down there. But if you go into Skiddaw, that should route up a little bit busier today. Looks like you might get a view out today. I'm dropping down a bit now to whip back and it's quite fast flowing today and there's no bridge <laughs> so got to sort of skip across it when we get there this is whip back then <laughs> and you sort of have to get across here right what do you think <laughs> yeah. There is a bridge further up, but you have to get to it, so we can't because <laughs> it's a river. Anyway, try and get over this. Do I trust that rock or not? No, I don't. Right, just gonna go for it. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> there is a bridge further up there, but you just can't get to it because of this. Oh, <laughs> that's tricky. There you go, go for it. Yes. <laughs> Safely over the river. <laughs> We're now going to work our way along a fairly gentle path. It's just like this behind me there, so it's fairly stable as you go along. Dash your view out as you go. <laughs> Stunning. <laughs> We're going to leave that view behind us and you can see over here that's just sort of cat bells on that area and that's dome water and got a beautiful bit of sun poking through the valley there and we're going up here into the wilderness <laughs> we're going to go down to youth hostel in a minute and that's a chance for a, a stop and a refresh and get a cup of tea this is Glen Terradera Beck at the side of me here and that's going to take us all the way up to the youth hostel so we're following that for quite a bit. At this point we're about 400 metres up and Keswick at the start is about 100 metres so dead gradual inclines you come up you can tell that a bit when you first come up that rig but apart from that really it's quite a gentle day but you've got that that is shot so nice view down all the time that's good yeah, it's good because you've got views but it's not like hectic to climb up so yeah nice gentle day so far Last time we said it was a little bit further up. That's long scale fell up there. And that should have been the view down I was getting. <laughs> so if you do that skid or walk, then that's your view. Lovely. As we're getting down here, you just see Great Calver, which is a Wainwright just in front of us there. And when I did the uh, back of Blencathra video, I was walking all around those. So that's the area we're walking into now. It's very purpley. I'm not sure if this is the path or a river because <laughs> that is pretty wet to say the least. Oh, did put down quite a bit of water last night. <laughs> I know from experience when we get up towards Lingy Hut that's quite boggy anyway. Yeah, it's not this wet all the time but for us today it is. So trying to manage our crossings best we can. There you go. As I mentioned, it is a bit of a wilderness day, so this is what you're looking at for the vast majority of this day. And we're going to work our way just to the very edge of the National Park, and that'll take us to Colbeck. Tonight's the only night we're going to spend in a tent at Colbeck, so we'll look at that a bit later on. I'm going to call it camping. There we go then. Our first bridge of the day. Could have done with that earlier. <laughs> well, a half bridge anyway. Ooh, coming down there, I fell right in knots in it. <laughs> What's this? A broken down old building. So a little bit further on, we're going to see some sheep pens in the circular, and that's really unusual, and it's. Uh, a local stone builder who's made them that way but yeah they're mentioned in the Wainwright books um, and quite an interesting feature I've not seen them like that before anywhere but it's quite wet on this top isn't it but it was a storm last night so uh, expected to be wet really for us so this isn't, isn't that usual but still it is a bit wet coming up on Great Calver it's the youth hostel not far away being there shortly. Weather forecast today is quite dry. Um, yeah, a bit cloudy, about 17 degrees, so quite a nice day for it. Classic look at that for a head that we've seen all the way there and all the way in the back. It's rampant. 
<laughs> right, let's try and get through here. One hand is way over the puddles. <laughs> it's a water gate. <laughs> Keep the bees going on uh, late summer. Then a heather, heather honey, nice. If you do come this time of year, which is August, then you'll recognise it from the massive amount of heather here. But where we're going, in that little uh, crop of trees there, that's the youth hostel there. It's a quite a spot. Yeah, Alison's just saying it's a good spot in the middle of nowhere. Really is remote. And you are out on the hills when you're doing this one. So, pop in there, get a cup of tea, then carry on. We're about a third or a bit more of the walk for today. Quite a Wall Street one coming across. Just getting there now then. This is the youth hostel. So coming up, let's get our house. And that could be the view from your bedroom if you choose to stay there. Look at that. Let's get in there. Let's see what they've got on offer. It's an honesty cafe. Bring some cash. I ain't got that. <laughs> you got some cash? Yeah. Have you? No. <laughs> oh, no cake for you then. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. There's a legend when you come in. Skid our house. 1550 feet. So, four centimetres. Okay, looks like we've got a place to ourselves. Lovely. That is your view out the window. Pretty good. Here we've got several kettles. Can't find the light switch for this room, so it's a little bit dark. Now you can pick it up. There's your snacks, all a pound each. And ideally, some cash for the tin. If you've not got it, it's okay. You can uh, transfer the money when you've got the uh, signal. These are my bank details here, so that'd be great. Thanks very much. <laughs> well, we just stopped for a little brew in the uh, YHA. What do you think of it? It's good. I like it. Stay here. Yeah. Everything you need, doesn't it? Yeah, so I've got everything you need. Um, honestly, shop here. Everything's a quid, so a cup of tea, chocolate bar. Reception opens at five, weirdly. Mm. Seems a little bit late, but there you go. We've <laughs> got a story. <laughs> So about a third of the way through and the next third we'll get our way to High Pike and then the last third down to Colbeck. Mm. What do you think of it so far? It's a good walk, plenty of views, it's nice and yeah, yeah. Good. probably been a bit wet. <laughs> yeah, so good views all the way because um, although you're not going up very high you can see down the side quite well and yeah. look back so it's really good. good so yeah, all right, let's press on then to uh, High Pike. Yes. Next big part. What is it? Rack. A rack? Yeah. What, for stretching you? <laughs> <laughs> what do you want it? <laughs> there you go. I like you used to get in the houses of old. Right, let's leave this warm, dry place and get out there. You got it. There you go. Another one of them tricky gates. <laughs> right, so footpath, and we are heading down here.
What's your favourite day so far? Still day two. Still day two. Oh, yes, it's nice views. So, for Allison, day two so far. I enjoyed day two, it was good. Day three is also good across that. We'll have to go back and get that done for yourself. <laughs> yeah. So for this, up to a Skiddle house, it's um, pretty gentle going up. So there's only that sharper up as you get towards that rig, but after that, pretty much rolling. And we're gonna do the same here on the second third. It is gonna climb. When we get to about the 450 to 550 meter section, it's a little bit steep there um, as we go up to High Pike. But yeah, generally speaking, it's good gentle walk today and you're definitely out in the wilderness. The fact that there are a few bridges on this one, it's probably an indicator that it's a bit of a wet one. <laughs> so you're definitely coming across a few streams and I've got that behind me again. So I feel like I'm walking in a stream again. Here's a bit of it. There's another of those bridges. So just crossed over the river Colju and it's gonna be that that we're following down this valley for quite a bit. So that's gonna be our little companion for a while. So far this second third Quite boggy, I would say, more so than the first by quite a bit. You have got the view back to see where we've come from though. So there's the valley and we've come all the way up here from Keswick. We're coming up to the sheep pen now. There's a few of these around. They're in the Wainwright books and they're circular pens, which are very unusual. It says in the books these were all made by the same person who would sleep in here overnight when making them. It's a local craftsman. There you go. So, unusual shape. Normally these are square, but got a few round ones on this northern fell. There it is. Doesn't look very sheep used, does it? <laughs> Can't see any sheep on this fell either. But there it is, nevertheless. Bit of mountain flora, not quite sure what they are. Thought they were bluebells, but they're not. Alison's convinced that bluebells are purple, but you know, maybe she's right and complain to somebody. <laughs> That's purple there. See that? That's purple. Different shades. Different shades of blue. The white. So we've gone through this heather for quite a bit. Then we get to another stream, which is Wiley Gill. And there's another sheep fold there, a circular one. So we're gonna cross over the stream there. So the bridge is coming. Uh, so Great Calvert is just there for direction. And the YHA is right down there somewhere. <laughs> it's quite a distance away. And here is the other circular sheep fold. Look at that. That is a cool one. It's a better cap one than that other one, isn't it? Quite a few sheep pens around, but not many sheep. If you're uh, doing this in one go, or planning it, because I know um, some people are watching this obviously to get ready for it. If you're tired after day three, then you're thinking, oh, day four is the mountainous one. It's not actually that mountainous. It's a very gradual up and then a gradual down the other side. There is that 100 meter bit when it's a bit steep, but you know, it's 100 meters, so it's not that bad. Uh, when you get to the top as well, as I mentioned, High Pike, 
It's the only rain right on this entire walk, as in the full five days. We walked past quite a few, but they said when we actually go up. On top of it, uh, there's a few little markers there. There's a windbreak there. There's the trig point there. Uh, there's a bench there. And that bench is a stone bench now, but it was originally a garden bench. I'll tell you about that when we get up there. All right, so a bit more along the valley, then we're going up. There's the river there, looking stunning, working its way through the valley. The river's right by us now, probably hear it there in the background. So, a little bit more to go on this. It's quite a uh, meditative walk, this, because you walk in the valley floor and nature around you, so just zone out and keep going. However, you've occasionally got this <laughs> thing going on. What is happening here? Now we're getting over this. I can't get over that. That looks steppable, but this down here, this is like ridiculous. There we go. Hey! <laughs> I'm going over this. Oh! Right, here we go. <laughs> Very heathery. All right, they've got another obstacle. There we go. What have you got? Oh, I, uh, I think I remember this from last time. Go on. <laughs> there you go. Like a gazelle. <laughs> you're just saying you're really ready for this up, aren't you? Yeah. Up for it. <laughs> we're going towards the Mosdale Valley Information Centre now and the car park. So from there, we're going to take a left and we're going to go up Great Lingy Hill. And up there, we'll have uh, the Lingy Bothy, Lingy Hut. So this is the bridge. That's Grange Gill back just there, and whether you can see or not, right at the top there, that's the Lingy Bothy, so Lingy Hut. When we get up there, the Bothy, it looks like a big, <laughs> to me, a black TARDIS in the landscape. It's just kind of sat there. It's very imposing. <laughs> right, so we're going up here for a bit, and then we're walking our way across. We're going to get to the other side, kind of down here, and then we'll work our way back up to Lingy Hut there. This is Coombe Heights at the side here, so we're just kind of walking around that. So we've come from down there, over the bridge, and then we're on this very stable path going up. This is a little information board for us about the mining area. So it says the deep underground miners extracted lead, arsenic, tungsten. Now that is someone I do not want to work. <laughs> Sounds incredibly poisonous. All right, so that's the Cumbria Way that we're on. We're there. <laughs> And the mill would have been on this side, behind us, I guess there. It says there's remains of World War I tungsten mill. Oh, that'll be that over there. Oh, cool. Right, I'll have a look at that. From the bridge to High Pike, it's about 300 metres up, so it's you know relatively steep, but the first section is quite gentle. 
quite a bit of water coming down this section. It is uh, quite water on the path as well. This is what I'd call a steady climb. We are going up all the time and you've got this sort of rapid river slash waterfall running at the side all the time, so that's cool. Ooh. A few little rowing trees dotted about. Full of berries. Well, this is a bit special, look at that. Wow. Um, maybe further up. Let's have a look. That looks better. Yeah, <laughs> that'll do us. <laughs> Just one giant leap for Alison Kind. No. Too big. Do you want a hand? No? Okay. <laughs> This section is quite waterfally all the way, but it is a more notable one for you. I know we had rain last night, but this is crazy. It's like, it's a massive waterfall section, this. So, really breaks up the walk a bit. Look at this. So we've got about 50 metres to go up of the steep bit. <laughs> but if I learned anything on this trip, it's the steep bits sometimes mean waterfalls. So, you know, definitely some benefit in there. The other good thing is, you get that view behind me. So, there's no view without height. What did you think of the climb? <laughs> right, we're just coming to the crest now. That was quite a tough up, uh, not because of the height particularly, but it's quite boggy underfoot and you have to manoeuvre quite a bit around the puddles and whatnot today. So it's made it a bit more marshy, a bit more effort, but we're up. Right, there it is, Lingy Hut. We've hit the main path now, so we've crested the hill and we're just going to Lingy Hut down here. And there, We'll have a sandwich and see what's in the bothy. Don't know if it's, they paint it black or what, but it always stands out like, like a sort on, on the landscape. It's kind of strange if it is meant to because it was a shooting hut. So you'd think like you might want to blend that in a bit. But it's in the way Mike books that it's not one of those anymore. And he's an avid conservationist. During his life gave quite a lot of money to animal charities. If you're not quite sure what bothies are, they're like shelters out in the wilds and you can stay in them, they're kind of emergency shelters really, but you can plan to go in them, you can't book them or anything, so you might turn up and there's a few other people, or there might be nobody, but we'll have a look inside this one and you can see what kind of thing you can expect from the bothy. It's pretty basic. I don't know whether I didn't notice this last time or what, but it appears to be weighted down, <laughs> uh, pegged down like a tent. So I guess they've been here for a while, so I guess I just didn't notice. But yeah, it's not surprised he does stick out like a sore thumb. It's anchored in there solidly. Right, let's have a little poke around inside. See what we've got. There we go. Lingy hut. Do you want to check it out? Yes. Have a look then. Go on, I'll let you... Uh, Ladies first. Right, here's your accommodation for the night. So it's pretty basic inside. Uh, there's sleeping platforms for one person there. <laughs> one person there, you can't go to sleep. We need to get this finished. <laughs> and there's your view out the window. So let's have a look. There you go, you can have that view for free. There's your evening's entertainment watching that. So just gonna 
rest there a little bit, get a sandwich, and then push on. So a little bit of height to do, maybe about 50, 60 meters up, something like that, that's fine. Then we're all the way down to Colbeck, prominent your hut. You've got about 80 meters or so to climb, but it is fairly gentle, it's the top of High Pike. And there, you can have a little sit on the bench if you want. A bit windy though. A bit windy for the bench, yeah. Um, but when we're doing this, this bit is quite gentle and although it is like a wilderness day and it's probably the one where you're most remote, you do actually get to stop at the youth hostel, you stop at the hut, so have a little sit down, a cup of tea, sandwich, and it's all right. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. Wainwright gives High Pike probably about 14 pages, I think, in the book. So Swanee does explore quite a bit and there's some different features on the top to look forward to. But it's the only one on this entire walk, so once you've completed all five days of the Cumbria Way, you can be rest assured you bagged one Wainwright. <laughs> so, that's cool because there's only a 213 to go. <laughs> they are quite convex hills these, so you're hitting little um, sort of false tops all the time. Just crested this, so at the top there, that is High Pike. And there's a significant marker on the top there, a bit of a wind shelter, a bench, another wind shelter further down. <laughs> so quite a bit of stuff. As you can see on that one, it's quite a well, this is a gentle path anyway. And then we're just taking a very gradual incline to the top there. Then that is our peak for today. Now that's the summit just appearing in front of us here. Here we go then. Kern marker, summit. Trig point, bench. <laughs> this memorial bench here, it used to be a park bench, but it's uh, changed. I think it's 1961 around there, but I'll put it in the description for you. So yeah, it's a dedication to a young lad who's died, age 16, Mick Lewis. So it says, who loved all these fells? And in the summer, so 8th of May, 1944. Okay, oh, I suppose I'd better go and <laughs> tap this. There you go. So the bench at the moment faces um, sort of towards the west, but originally it faced more towards the south. There's the other wind shelter just at the other end, but that's uh, not the summit. 192 miles. Well, wow. it may be London 292 miles, but I'm more interested in this one, Colbeck 2 miles. <laughs> Carlisle 11. Carlisle 11. Oh, well, not for tonight though, just Colbeck 2 miles. Flies, yeah, <laughs> this is a rough estimation. This <laughs> the work of fiction. High Pike is the highest thing on the Cumbria Way, so it's well named. And now we're going to head our way down to Colbeck, which is allegedly two miles away. <laughs> but I think it's about three. <laughs> As you're looking out, we're coming to the edge of the National Park now, and it's going to flatten out quite a bit. So Colbeck is actually the last town that marks the start or the beginning of the Lake District. And day five is a walk through the upper part of Cumbria, and we'll get ourselves to Carlisle. We'll go down two miles, and then we'll be in Colbeck. And we'll stay at the campsite there tonight in a tent. So we'll have a look at that when we get there. But if you've uh, enjoyed the video so far, then it helps me out if you click on the like. And if you want to see these on day five when it comes up next week, then just click on subscribe and you'll get the notification if you've got your notification switched on. All right, so the notification bell is just a little kind of bell icon in the corner. So 
that'll give you all the information when these get uploaded and that's every Sunday at five o'clock. Okay, let's make the rest of the walk then and get into Colbeck. Whoop! <laughs> it's a bit slippery underfoot on the way down because <laughs> it's a bit muddy because of the rain. Uh, but yeah, gentle walk down really, so I'll just show it to you. Grassland, fieldy walk, we're just heading gently down into the village of Colbeck. Got some summer haircuts then, haven't they? Yeah. So yeah, basically first third, pretty gentle, good walk, nice and easy introduction. Uh, middle third from the YHA, Salingi Hut. Bit boggy, bit of a steep up, bit of a tricky up as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, just because of the, yeah, because the terrain underfoot was not great. Um, but yeah, fine. And then last bit, pretty straightforward. So yeah, easy peasy downhill. Here's a gate then, and more or less into civilization. I want to say thanks to those people that are liking the video and uh, passing it on to other people and also putting comments in so I get a bit of feedback. So thanks for that, really helps to grow the channel out. <laughs> Clay Bottom Farm. <laughs> Getting a bit warm now, back down to the valley. And um, once you hit the road, it's probably like a mile on the road, do you think? So yeah, something like a mile on the road and then you'll be in Colbeck. So we'll see what it's like in there. Still road walking. <laughs> it's one of those classic walks where you think you're finished. Then you seem to go in the last bit for ages. So anyway, we'll soon be there. It's the last of a mile now. It's like a 1K to go. It is summer, but it's a bit overgrown this, isn't it? It's kind of like nettles sticking out to try and grab you. <laughs> What's happening here? There's a signpost there, <laughs> but you can't get across. So it's this little dink here. And then we're up here. There we go. That looks like the sign for the Cumbria Way. Ooh, that looks like a muddy little path. Hmm. <laughs> right, it's jumping time. Oh, it's mucky, it's just a big jump. Yeah. There we go. You all right? Getting there now. Lovely. Just yeah. once through that gate, there's another gate there. <laughs> Might finish with angry farmers again. <laughs> Electric fence. So don't go in there. There's some horses though. Ooh. Ooh. That's sticky. Bolt. Whoa, that's a strong spring. <laughs> there we go. Up here. <laughs> well, <laughs> carrying on straight along here for the last section. On this last section, uh, I would say obviously I'm using an app to help guide me uh, along the route. So I've downloaded that before we started. And for sections like this where it's a bit farmy, it is really useful. So if you can get that on like all trails or OS maps or something, that's going to help. There was a little promise of rain today, but it didn't. So I'm thankful for that. And tomorrow should be dry. So good weather going into day five. There we go. A little bit of a improvisation there. Oh, oh goodness me. <laughs> it's completely off. Hinge. It's not got a hinge, it's got rope. <laughs> Ropey hinge. And a ropey lock. <laughs> right, we're just going over the bridge at Gilbeck now. There you go, it's cute. Look at that. Quite a little bridge. That's a super posh house there. A couple of ducks there as well. Just downstream there, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a heron 
just on the uh, left hand side of that fall, looking for his tea. So that's the second heron for the walk. So wildlife count for today, sheep and cows, of course. Uh, we've seen a heron now, and there were a couple of ducks there as well. And in fact, that person's got a chicken as well, because they saw that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's just his garden. Uh, but the additional things I've seen is this morning, didn't manage to catch it, but I did see a kestrel on a fence post, so that's pretty cool. Red squirrel, you saw? Yeah. There you go. Anything else we've seen? Hares, yeah, we've seen a few hares knocking about, uh, probably about five or six. So, yeah, good old wildlife camp for today. Uh, midges, <laughs> yeah, midges as well. <laughs> this is it then, we've made it into Colbeck. Uh, and now, oh, what? Canal. a canal. Mm. What, where? Yeah. Oh, that one is a canal. That's a bit of a thin person's <laughs> aperture, isn't it? I'm not sure I can get in there. No. no? Apparently they've taken the canal, it's now a road. <laughs> it's, I don't know if I can get in there. Hang on a minute. It's not built for blokes. <laughs> this is the village then. Let's get ourselves on the path. And um, we're heading down, the church will be down there, and we're camping uh, just a little bit past that, right on the Cumbria Way. So we're just down here, and we're at the side of the pub. So this is the Old Fellows Arms. Been there for a pint later. Just go and check out the accommodation first. Fresh milk from the farm. There's the uh, village shop and petrol station. <laughs> right, so we're just down here to our accommodation for the evening. Right, so this is the glamping pod. Uh, so our idea of camping tonight. <laughs> You've got chair and tables there. Uh, a lovely bed with fairy lights equipped. You've got your tea and coffee making facilities for, of course, you need in every tent. Uh, your heater over there, should you get a bit chilly in the night. And then we're out towards the uh, decked area, glass of Prosecco maybe, nice stream down there. Alison over here, burgers. making burgers. Are the burgers coming? Oh, slowly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> burgers from the local shop, nice people in there, so well worth a visit. Got lots of local produce. Yeah. So I haven't really made a big deal of the accommodation on this trip, but I would definitely book this uh, in Colbeck. It's Colbeck camping, it's 65 quid. Definitely worth it. Even if you're camping and bring your tent with you, it's definitely worth it um, because you get a night of luxury after you're probably doing four days trekking through the hills. So yeah, I see you in the morning. <laughs>